Marine reacts to SCP-2273, also known as Major Alexei Belotrov, and his object class Euclid, by the Exploring Series. As always, I'm going to be posting a link to the original video and channel down in the description below, so go ahead and make sure that you check them out. Don't know too much about this SCP, all I know is that's to deal with the Russian military. Figured I might be able to actually start talking about some of my military background in reference to SCPs. But uh, other than that, I really don't know too much else. So before we get into the actual SCP video, don't forget to like, subscribe, it really does help me a lot. Hit that notification bell right there, now we get notified every time I do upload. Sometimes I upload twice a day. And you're typically working on these videos in the morning, and then releasing them in the late afternoon to late evening. That way when you all get off work, you enjoy these videos at your leisure. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and see what SCP-2273, or Major Alexei Belotrov, is all about. SCP-2273 Major Alexei Belotrov of the Red Army's 22nd Armored Infantry Division War is typically a brutal, horrifying, and tragic affair for most of those that partake in it, with long-lasting ramifications. This SCP is about a soldier from another universe who wears a living bug as armor, but at the same time it's about more familiar and relatable concepts related to war. We won't get action-packed logs filled with alternate universe soldiers tearing things apart, but we will I won't lie, it's kind of disappointing a little bit, but excited to see about this armor. Get an interesting and unique look at a man separated from his war-torn home. SCP-2273 is an entity of extra-universal origin consisting of two separate but connected parts. One being a non-anomalous human man named Alexei Belotrov and the other is an anomalous organism that shares a symbiotic relationship with him. This organism completely covers Alexei, leaving nothing exposed, and possesses a number of unique traits, including a durable chitinous carapace, compound lensed eyes that give it a 270 degree field of vision, advanced musculature that allows Alexei to lift an estimated 1200 kilograms of weight, a proboscis similar to that of a housefly that lets the organism procure nutrients, and a fully functional organic radio transceiver. The organism's circulatory and nervous systems are connected with Alexei, so whatever it sees, feels, or hears, so does Alexei. Alexei can't normally speak, so the radio transceiver is used for all communications. He can't normally speak. Mm, I'm hmm, curious to know as to why. Possible injury or just because he's in the suit? 2273 is nearly 7 feet in height, weighing over 600 pounds, but was unarmed when found, with wounds on his arms and shoulder blades where Alexei says that weapons were previously mounted. The organism also had some colored scar tissue that appeared like tattoos corresponding to military patches, indicating that Alexei was a major in the 22nd Armored Infantry Division, a unit that doesn't exist nor has ever existed in the Russian military. Alexei was found by the Foundation after investigating a seismic event and subsequent radiation spikes in Wisconsin in 1989. He was found by tracking down some radio transmissions, and he was discovered wounded, delirious, and suffering from malnutrition, offering no resistance to the recovery team. He is subsequently interviewed by a Dr. Friedrich, who first tries speaking in Russian, but Alexei responds in German and tells him his accent is atrocious. Interesting. So he's part of the Russian army, but he spoke German. And, hmm, I wonder why that would be the case, though. I mean, obviously, different realities and have different events that occurred, so it could be that the countries were different somehow. But, hmm, so he ended up in Wisconsin, and, I mean, I'm really hoping they do shed light on how he actually got there. Maybe it was a, another SCP that accidentally transported him or something. And I'm also curious to know how he got this armor. Because they said that he was a normal human. 
or like he's a normal human, but it's, if you consider a symbiotic relationship with the suit or with the bug carapace. So I decided to learn a little more about that if they go into that. Alexei then tells him to stop with the pleasantries because he knows that they have killed his men, tortured him, and left him to die in the wilderness. He says that his men died because he surrendered, and he knows that was a mistake because they should have died to like warriors fighting for the motherland. He had hoped that by surrendering he could spare their lives, but instead they are dead, and he's here in an American concentration camp. When asked if he knows where he is, Alexei says that it doesn't matter because he will not be broken. American concentration camp. So I'm assuming that the U.S. and Russia in this reality, or in his reality, they were actually going at it. It wasn't probably like a Cold War where they had little proxies do the fighting for them. It seems like they were actually going toe-to-toe. -to, -toe. to help Alexei understand his situation, the doctor gives him some low-level information about the Foundation. This clears a few things up for him, and he refers to the Foundation not as dogs, but as crows, which is Red Army slang for the Foundation equivalent in his universe, a group that steals weapons from both sides for containment. He now understands that he is not where he came from, and although Dr. Friedrich tells him they want to find out where he came from so they can send him back, Alexei knows that he'll be in this cell forever. Friedrich admits that's probably the case, but the experience doesn't have to be miserable if he cooperates. Three days later, Alexei asks to speak again with Friedrich, telling him that he's not quite sure the Foundation isn't working with the Americans, so he's not going to say anything that the Americans in his universe wouldn't already know. When asked about the war that he's been involved in, Alexei says that it is the Second Great Patriotic War which started after the Americans launched a nuclear attack against Russia and its allies. This led to a nuclear holocaust, with most of the population forced to retreat underground. Alexei's armor allows him to survive on the surface, and it was built for the Russian military by a group called the Engineers. He's not even sure how it works, really, but he knows that it has saved his life countless times, and has been worth the pain. Since the armor takes many years to grow, Alexei's parents volunteered him for the program when he was just a boy, and it was the most painful experience of his life. He is glad for the process though, as it made him that much more of a warrior for his country, since everything it feels, sees, smells, tastes, or hears, so does he. I just found that one line crazy, like when it said that it takes a while for the actual, um, suit to grow that's interesting so it's got to be something done when you're young so you can like grow into it i just thought that was really cool to, cool to point out so additionally the organism is capable of thinking as it identifies targets weapons ammunition supplies friends and foes objectives hazards and helps alexi formulate battle plans and combat tactics he is clearly proud of the things that he and his armor have accomplished over the years. When the Foundation had found him, he had just been captured by the Americans, who had forcibly removed his weapons and supply packs, which were mounted onto the organism's body, creating wounds. They had done this with all of Alexei's surviving men as well, before killing them. All he remembers afterwards is a bright flash of light. The Americans were gone. And he was in a different location. All right, um, I'll try to add some of my own experience in here. When if we were, I mean, I'll, I, I I'm pretty sure I said it in a previous video, like way back when. I was an O311 in the Marine Corps. Uh, I was infantry, and I, so I was like a front line kind of guy. Although nothing ever happened when I was in to me personally. Never saw any combat. Could there have been a few times where I might have? Sure, but nothing really ever happened at all. But in our training, at least, whenever we would take a, a POW, right, we, we would disarm them and then hold them down, make sure they don't have anything, no explosives, anything that they might try to do, like a last, last stand t kind of thing. But then, and uh, as soon as we're doing that, we're also having at least one person keep security in case some dude has some secret pocket or he just has something that we missed. 
So he's always keeping an eye on him, has his uh, M4 trained on him. But then as soon as that happens, we zip tie him up. And now we're either going to, depending on what the situation is, like if we're on a mission, we might hold him back with a, a little team that's our, I can't remember the name. We have a POW team, the, the, the team in the squad that's going to take care of that. And we got a security team, we have an assault team, and then as far as the, um, if we were doing this in a still situation, like at a checkpoint or something, and we found two people in a truck that we thought or assumed that they were going to have explosives or something like that, we'd do the same thing, make sure they're disarmed, and we would just keep them there, and then go, go at that situation from there. So we, we wouldn't kill them unless they tried something. Because then at that moment, you really only have a couple seconds to actually react and better to be safe and keep your guys and yourself alive than for wh whoever that person is to kill at least everyone in the general vicinity. So, yeah, uh, obviously this is a different reality. This is just like SAP documents and all that. But typically, if you were to kill them after disarming them, it's considered a war crime. So that's one thing I can add, right, somewhat. So he started sending encrypted distress codes until the Foundation found him. The next day, Alexei was showing significantly reduced signs of stress, and asked Dr. Friedrich if he could be supplied with recordings of the Russian composer Tchaikovsky. Friedrich says he'll see what he can find, and then asks him more about the engineers that built his armor. The engineers have apparently never built this armor for themselves because it is not their war. When Friedrich asks why not, Alexei asks if they don't have engineers in this world because they are very much not like humans. There's a lot of third parties in the SCP universes. Lots of third parties. They fear the sun and have beast-like coats, but are smarter than any human you'd ever meet. They made the war possible for both sides. I've discussed these entities before, as SCP-1000, also known as Bigfoot, or the Children of the Night. In Alexei's universe, they hadn't been wiped out to the same degree as in our universe, so instead they had just stayed underground. Alexei explains that they were a relatively recent discovery by the people of his world, when the French found them in buried cities during the Great War, while they were digging trenches. SCP-1000 decided to help both sides by making advanced weaponry in order to propagate war amongst our species as payback. This war of course ended with Germany's defeat. Alexei recognizes some understanding in Friedrich's eyes as he guesses that their worlds are not entirely different after all. Two years go by with Alexei in peaceful containment, regularly interviewed every week by Friedrich. He had been reading The Time Machine by H.G. Wells, and identified with the protagonist, as they had both seen many things that they didn't think they would ever see, and been to places that they would have rather have not been to. They both saw the world die, and have gone somewhere where they cannot return from, leaving friends behind. Alexei goes on to mention that he's been having trouble sleeping at night, worried that his armor might be malfunctioning. It seems to be dragging up old memories as he's trying to sleep, which is one of its functions, so that Alexei can remember details he'd normally forget, but now it's showing him things from the war that he'd rather forget. Alexei brushes it off though, saying- So really, he seems like he's suffering from PTSD, and honestly man, that thing's no joke. I mean, it never really happened to me, like, I mean obviously because I never saw combat, so I never had really anything harsh happen to me um but i did have some people that were in when i was coming in and they were coming out that actually did see some combat and most of them were pretty good but some of them you can tell like there's like that little thing in the back of their head that's kind of like they they have a look and they saw some stuff so and that he'll cope but friedrich encourages him to discuss it after some hesitation, Alexei explains that he's been seeing his men's faces staring up at him from the dirt, asking him why he didn't keep them safe, and why he was allowed to live while they had to die. 
He had trained alongside those men since they were children, and it was his order to surrender that got them killed. He believes that he should have died with them, and now he's no better than the American dogs that killed them. He doesn't want to feel this way anymore, and asks the doctor to make it stop. Let's talk about that for a minute. Not really too much to say with this video. As you are going to realize, there is a big chunk of it cut out, and that was just due to the majority of it, me just not really having anything to say or relate to besides uh, him joining the Clockworks and being known as Father, Father Anvil. And then we found out that Friedrich was contained as an SCP, although it was never really specified why that happened. And then he ended up dying. And then I believe it was in the 2050s that Alexei would end up dying. So I, re I really didn't have too much to say for a big chunk of that video. So a, a lot of that is gonna be taken out mainly because I'm also uploading uh, some more videos right now. And as far as what my computer can handle, it, it will typically start to work on the smaller videos first and then work on the large videos. And I have some large videos that are, are trying to upload right now. So I decided to cut the part out where there wasn't really much going on. I really couldn't say anything. And it was also already at the end of the original document for the SCP. It would go into another reality and then start talking about like uh, what happened after he was actually released and it seemed in this SCP Foundation reality that they were actually, the public was more aware of SCPs and they actually let a couple of SCPs who were safe uh, actually out and about. And Alexei obviously had a tough time and he was writing letters back and forth with Friedrich. So didn't have too much to say. Loved it. I felt for the character. Um, uh, yeah, I, I was expecting some uh, some more action, although in the beginning I did hear that this wasn't going to be one of those, so wasn't really able to relate uh, some training experience as well that I've been through, so hopefully in the video here in the future, but that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, it really does help me out a lot. Hit that dislike button if you didn't like it, it helps me improve the channel. If you're curious to see what videos are going to be coming out next, just hit the description down below. You're going to see a little list there for about five. Top to bottom, that's going to be how I view them. But until then, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.